Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. And this video is going to have two parts. It's mostly going to be a high stakes hand history re review. But before I start, I want to talk a bit about a news item that, that caught my attention. For those of you who don't know Charlie Carroll, I think won millions of dollars playing poker, mostly in live tournaments. And he has his own website and everything and his own YouTube channel. I think he came into notoriety or, or fame when Doug Paul did a you know, $100 to $10,000 cash game challenge. And Charlie came out and said, you know, Doug, you're doing this all wrong. You're trying to play GTO at low stakes. That's a terrible idea. And Charlie made this video where he said, fuck GTO and explained why GTO is bad. And, uh, yeah, they've been kind of online adversaries since. So what I wanted to talk about is this two plus two thread that you should be able to see on my screen. Can Charlie Carroll beat 500 Zoom tweets about prop bet? And it starts out with Charlie saying, I've had high stakes poker players throughout my whole career speak about how terrible I am at poker, which is true. I'm, I'm fairly, <laughs> fairly sure. And he's saying, I'm offering 100 to 200k that I can beat 500 Zoom online after barely playing poker for two years. Nobody responded. All bark, no bite. The poker world is so full of toxicity. Art. So. The reason I want to comment about this is I actually know Charlie Carroll from way back in the day as he was coming through stakes. Uh, we were in a Skype strategy group together. This was before he was successful in any way. And I remember the types of questions he was asking and how he was discussing things and everything. So I wanted to give my two cents on can Charlie Carroll beat Zoom 500 in the Skype group. Everyone was doing GTO stuff, like, well, what should my range be here? What do you guys think about this spot? And we were talking about blockers and, and numbers and maybe HUD stats. And Charlie was asking very different kind of questions than everyone else. Charlie would so show some crazy hand where he floats a four bet with nothing and the guy bets the turn and they're like 300 deep and he, he writes, I think if I shove here, my opponent should overfold. What do you guys think? And as someone in, in, in that group, the only answer you can give to someone like that is, you know, you should have folded the flop and this isn't the hand that you should be doing this with. Like your hand has, has no business being there. You should do this with this combo or that combo, not, not the one you're there with. So we're giving kind of balanced answers. But Charlie was actually constantly asking about these spots and constantly thinking actually really, really deep about the game, about trying to to win pots without direct relation to his hand necessarily just kind of is, is it a good spot or a bad spot against a specific opponent? It's really something that's tough to answer in a Skype group because each of us has his own image and uh, I don't know necessarily the guys he's playing with. So all I could say was like, if you think he's going to overfold, go for it. But I, I have no clue who the guy is or what your image is or anything. So yeah, all that aside, my personal opinion for someone with this kind of thought process and approach who has had success is that he can actually easily beat Zoom 500. I think this is completely the correct approach to poker. To not be too worried about the cards you have, they are important, but it's more about the situation, your opponent, your image. Can you or can't you get him to fold? So I do like Charlie's ch chances. Uh, to beat Zoom 500. If there was a bet going, depending on the terms, I would bet on Charlie's side. So I uh, wanted to throw that out there. I think he is probably a, a fairly good player and probably an underrated player. Okay, with that aside, we'll jump into the high stakes hand review. We have some GG network hands. First one is between Imagine King and Marius G-I-E-R can't see the rest of the name here in the replayer. The game's 200, 400. This is a game that's been running for a while. 20 buy-ins is, is almost a million dollars. So Marius raises the cutoff. Imagine King calls from the small blind. Artem Shag calls from the big blind. We're three-way to the flop. Deuce, 10, 9, rainbow. Small blind and big blind check as they're going to on deuce, 10, 9. 
and Marius bets uh, roughly one third pot. I always say, you know, the small bet indicates you're betting a very wide range. When you're multi-way, it, it's actually different. Uh, here, the small bet is not so much indicating that you're betting a very wide range. It's more, you know, if you start betting really big against two live ranges, things narrow down really, really fast. So it's just kind of dictated by the situation that you don't bet too big and, and you're definitely not betting a really wide range in, in the sense of you can't bet your entire range. What I kind of do in my head is, you know, the bottom X percent of hands that have nothing to do with the board, I just trash them. I'm not going to do anything with them. And maybe, maybe I'm betting the rest of my range if I'm going for a very small size. So imagine king raises, deuce 10, 9, rainbow. You guys haven't checked out the check raising course. It does explain how to structure check raise ranges, but obviously, you know, value is at some threshold of ace 10, king 10, somewhere around there. Marius calls. Turn is the ace of spades. Very good card for Marius's range because Marius is going to be presumably floating with some ace king suited, ace queen suited, ace jack suited. Maybe has ace nine, ace deuce, ace nine, ace ten. Improve to two pair aces. Improve etc. Uh, so it, it it's a it's a good card for his range. So in, in terms of slowing down or putting the pedal to the metal, definitely a a card Imagine King should be slowing down on. And we see him check Marius bets one third pot and imagine king calls so at this point if we're thinking about ranges which which you guys should always practice doing what could marius have Let, let's start with this so he bet all the flop and he bet one third on the turn he could at this point have still all the draws king queen king jack queen jack jack eight queen eight i, I, I don't need to, to tell you guys all of them but all of the draws he could presumably have you know any pair that he continued with and he was just third pot standing in the turn for for some protection and of course he could still have a bunch of knotted stuff like deuces nines tens well whatever imagine king on the other hand to check all the turn one third bet at this point he probably cannot have got shots anymore so he could have some pairs you know maybe check raise something like king 10 he could have some stronger draws uh, so open enders are good enough to call one third uh, if he decided to slow down on the turn given a bad turn card and then he sees a small bet maybe just calls so random pairs open enders and maybe a few slow plays i think it's uncommon to to check all a one third with with a set but maybe you have something like 10 9 where you know given a board texture and all trying to get that much money in anymore okay so very very important whenever you're, you're playing hands to be very focused on ranges so this helps you to make good decisions down the line so river imagine king checks and marius bets a pot-sized river bet a really big bet this is really a, a spot where you have to be very very sharp to get the thresholds correct so let's say marius has ace king is ace king good enough to bet this big is actually an important question depends how many slow plays the other guy has but if he doesn't have slow plays presumably any ace is, is good enough to bet really big and all the draws busted so why not bet you know ace king huge i don't know where the exact threshold is is it two pair i doubt worse than an ace could bet big i would guess an ace with a bad kicker could probably bet big i don't think kickers play too much so that, that's kind of my thoughts on the, the thresholds and bluffs you know you have six seven six eight seven eight jack seven jack eight queen eight like all, all the busted draws are still there so infinite bluffs to choose from imagine king calls and we have a showdown marius with pocket tens for a flop top set so you know well played maybe you wanted to have put in more money into this pot with this hand and then imagine king has queen jack of hearts so pretty surprising flop check raise makes sense turn check calls perfectly fine river check call this we're heading into soul reading territory first of all i don't think you can be certain that marius isn't ever bluffing with queen jack himself or something like king jack although i i, I don't think he should be bluffing with king jack and maybe not with queen jack i'm not sure but, but uh, i still think it, it's an iffy call even in terms of the absolute hand strength it is true that marius missed with a he does have lots of busted trolls so it's not the worst spot to make a big call especially if marius is not value betting then to me this this seems pushing it i'd look for a hand with different properties obviously like gto this is terrible blockers this is terrible so this is just a soul read of, of marius bluffing too much 
for you know the one third turn into pot river on all the draws missing etc which maybe is i i don't know if he'd still be bluffing too much to the point where you can call queen jack but i can see where the guy's coming from like if this hand had been king jack i would respect the call a lot more i think queen jack is, is just a bit too much next hand is between limitless victor malinowski and Marius, G-I-E-R, whatever it is again. Heads up, 100-200. We have a check, deuce, three rainbow board. Marius raised pre-flop. Flop, limitless checks. Marius bets one third pot, so he's probably betting close to his entire range. Victor check raises. We have a call. Don't think we need to talk too much about the check raising range, but definitely you, you should have like the, the bluffs in your head. So when the turn is a nine of spades, you should know that you know, queen 10 and 10, 9 and, and queen 8 are all hands that, that potentially check raise. And then uh, Victor might turn draws on those cards. So either way, 9's, I, I guess, more of a good card for Limitless than, than a bad one. He barrels the turn, not the hugest sizing, so still could just have a good jack in his range. And we get the Ace of Spades River. Ace of Spades is kind of, you know, first of all, this is heads up. So everyone has... 4 5 in, in their range and 4 5 gets there. So that's a really, really big thing on the ace. Other than that, you, you know, some, some two pairs improve and, and stuff, but I, I think given how wide ranges are heads up, the main thing that comes in on the ace is 4 5. 4 5 is a big, big deal for Limitless's range. So this is probably actually a, a fairly good card for him. See him bet. Marius goes all in. You know, betting threshold for Limitless again, pro probably two pair. Two per plus. Marius shoving is presumably a good set or better, if I had to guess. Maybe it's just the not straight or better, given how many straights there are out there. And Limitless makes a call with pocket deuces. Pocket deuces, you know, feels close to me personally. I don't know if Marius, unless Marius can shove ace jack himself, deuces is, is just a bluff catcher in this situation. So it, it, it's close. You know, I'm, I'm sure most people would just call it because it's a set, but you know, it, it's important to make this shift of, you know, in this situation, is deuces a set or is deuces just like random two cards that only beat bluffs? Marius does actually show up with a bluff. He shows up with jack six. So if we run through what the hell Marius was doing, so pre-flop good, flop he C bets, he calls a check raise, obviously he has top pair, turn he calls the turn bet, obviously he has top pair. River, he faces a bet. Jack six is now a bluff catcher. He decides to go all in with it. Now here we want to talk about, you know, maybe he had a solar read, whatever. We're, we're not going to know, but is this a good combo to do this with? And I would have to say definitely not. This is a very bad combo to do this with. I mean, it's fine to do this with a jank, uh, but the six kicker to me looks like the worst possible kicker because, you know, Victor maybe has four six and five six as bluffs. So why do you want to have the six? Obviously you want to have a four or five if possible. So a jack four, jack five would feel like the hands to do this with. I would guess that's enough hands. So I, I wouldn't look to do this further. And this to me feels like, you know, we're in soul read territory to, to do this play. But yeah, I was actually curious. So I, I simmed the hand just to quickly look at it. In the sim, I just put the sizings these guys used because they're not using... You know, Limitless isn't using the, like, optimal barrel sizes here. So just wanted to see what happens with, with his sizes. And C-bat, check raise, jack six calls, nine of spades turn, deuces barrels, jack six always calls, every jack calls a turn, ace of spades river, deuces always bets for this size. You guys can kind of see, first of all, there is no six five in, in the ranges here, but there is six four barreling for Limitless. Jack six never raises it plays call or fall on the river and the bluff raises are gonna be just other hands if you're gonna bluff raise a jack you want it to be jack five or maybe jack four and this is you know because solver has four six and not six five so so in, in practice either of these and po solver is also taking various other random hands maybe you bluff raise with a random like pair plus disconnected from the range card so nine seven king deuce but never jack six and raising this type of hand would be like a two to three big blind dv mistake in theory which is like i said this is soul read territory if you feel like it go for it and when you shop you you can see deuces is actually mixing 
because in position is shoving. You know, he can shove aces, he can't shove ace jack. It looks like previous hands were raised earlier due to the small sizes uh, that I was putting in the tree. Now, I want to throw out a caveat like when, when I put in just the one sizing, we do run into an issue when using PO solver where ranges are kind of more protected than maybe they are. Maybe Limitless has two sizes. Maybe he goes like 75% plus shove on the river, and then 75% is a weaker size and it's less protected like here all the nuts are in in this size because where else would they go maybe you know there are less nuts here but i i don't think it matters too much jack six clearly shouldn't be there jack five jack four clearly can be there deuces is a bluff catcher that's kind of all you need to know about this situation hope you guys enjoyed the video love to hear what you think in the comments like and subscribe to the channel check out the website and i'll see you guys next time Thank <laughs> you.